Still here at Wise Earth Farm and John has got a great way of doing field microgreens and actually John is where I got the idea about doing field microgreens a while ago but he's really kind of taken it to the next level it's kind of something he likes to do he likes to take things to the next level and he's got a brilliant way of doing a variety of microgreens in the field and it is very very profitable check it out to the microgreens. Are you seeding these by the Jang or something or? The four point seeder. Oh, okay. And it is double rate of whatever you would do for a regular salad green. Because we want them to be covered at day 10 to 12 yeah. versus day 21, right? So then we shank them at low so that you're left with the cotyledons intact. And are you harvesting those with the greens harvester or just by hand? By hand, because yeah. we have to cut them way too low. So right. these will be harvested today. Uh huh. Yeah, these they look will, like And if you think about how fast they grow, so this, this was last week's planting. This is this week's, and then two days ago I planted this row in here. So that's basically, I guess it's just over 14 days. So this is a block that you're pretty much just doing field microgreens in. Yeah. And this how block has ridiculously yielded this year. Man. Well, yeah, I bet. Twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> just six, six beds six 50 foot beds twelve thousand dollars like and that's that's not that's just what it's so yeah. far it's yeah. not just well and this isn't even a year-round thing you only do you do these seasonally yeah these the first uh greens that go in here what we start off with uh pea shoots they they do better but although this will do good too our first crop goes in probably april first part of april maybe middle of april and then we're going to set up a hoop house here at Caterpillar Tunnel and we'll be able to take these microgreens and pea shoots till about middle of November, maybe start of December, depending on how many frosts we have. Wow. And so you're germinating with the ground cloth. Yeah, that works really well. That works. Actually, it's, that's not ground cloth. That's uh, a fabric that they use if they want to put a road in unstable areas. So it doesn't allow sand to travel through, but it allows water to permeate through. And so it actually feels like it's an insulated cover. Yeah, it looks really I tried thick. landscape fabric before, didn't work well because it heats up it's too much. Yeah, right. And then the roots start going bad. Right. So this, like, or oh, uh, next Monday, this will already be uncovered. So that's, then they start looking like that over there. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And you're getting, what, at least 50 pounds of pea shoots off that bed. Is that, that's, is that, no, that's not even a bed. Long. That's not even a bed. That's 30 feet, and we and last harvest I got 25.5 kilos. Oh, 50 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like 55. 22.5 is 50. <laughs> At 15 bucks a pound or something like that, right? 10. But still, you yeah. make ridiculous money. Oh, absolutely. Money. In eight days. Yes. What is it? What's your turnover? Um. So let me think. Well, these were planted today. It'll also be harvested. No, it's about 10 days now. 10, 10, 11 days. Okay. Because yeah. these were planted, yeah. It's because we germinate them too. So we germinate our sun shoots actually two days now to get a tail happening. Yep. Because we just find it works better. Uh, we have to cover them a lot because we have mice and mice love to come in here and put everything into one pile and screw us up. Yep. So we like to give them a tail that long or a little bit shorter. And that's two days. So first day soaking of eight hours, then sprouting them for two, uh, for another 12 for 36 hours and then they get transplanted whereas um, sun shoots are just 24 hours wow so eight hours of soaking and then let them sit in there in uh, the pail for another 12 hours and there you go and your dtm is obviously going to get longer on the shoulder seasons it's probably still yes. solid right now because it's relatively ah uh, well with these cooler nights it's it's like those are like two days difference and yeah. the sun shoots Sun shoots are definitely quite a bit different actually. They've yeah. been two days already. Uh, but in general, yeah, two days. So I'm starting to now plant on Fridays versus Mondays. Right. So they just to gain me so it's ready at the same time. So you start these in April. Yeah. And then you when do you finish them up? You're gonna keep doing these until what, October? Middle middle of November. Oh middle you mean of November? Yeah, they'll we'll be harvesting Field stuff. Micros? Yeah out of middle of November. You have to plant a lot in advance because then they because, stay stagnant. Yeah, because what, how, like, so what I, what my question is, what's the variability in DTM? Like, so summer, you're probably down to eight days. Maybe even some of these ones, you might be less. Oh yeah, for November 15th, I have to plant those in October, like 20th. Because after November okay, so 1st, they, they pretty much don't Okay, grow. so they vary all the way from eight days to a month. 
Yeah. Be, it, it, at different points in the season. So what I'll do is at the end of October, I'll plant out a couple beds worth, which is basically four or five weeks worth, and then I'll harvest them. Wow. That time. So 12 grand on six 50 foot beds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... What, uh, what is I've that? I've calculated two this. Gra two grand a bed? No. Yeah. Two grand a bed. Yeah. 50 foot bed. Yeah. I've calculated, if, the, if I were to put microgreens into this whole field with this circulation we have here, it's something like 650 grand. <laughs> You'd have to export though. I know, but yeah. it's like, people <laughs> talk about making money, you yeah. can. Yeah, oh yeah. Like sure. it's intensive, uh, like, there's a lot of work, but it only takes 10 days to like uh, turn it back into something. So And there's not really weeding because they grow, it outpaces the weeds. There's zero weeding, yeah. there's zero maintenance. So if you look at those pea shoots were like that a week ago. We harvested them four days ago. This is churning them in with the, after the flail. So first of all, there's the flail mower, then the power harrow. Okay, and so now, wait, 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 take me through that quick, just so people understand. So when you're done with the crop, you harvest it. Yes. Then you run the flail mower. Flail, yeah, to br bring them down to just the seed. So just yep. mulch up as much as you can. Yep. And then power harrow it. So I did that today because I didn't have time yesterday or the day before. Okay. Uh, and then water them heavy then cover them with plastic and in seven to ten days you can plant again okay so you have to have a you have to have a that that leeway to fry out any residual stuff otherwise it's going to keep coming through the next crop right mm, well actually the problem is that it starts rotting okay it starts rotting your current seed so that's what we've noticed is you could just plant directly into it and yeah. it seems to be decent but it's not nice either so what i'm what i need is if I plant a bed's worth of pea shoots and sun shoots, which is what this is, two thirds of the bed is pea shoots, one third is sun shoot. And if I want these every week, I need a three bed rotation in the middle of summer. And I need, from now on, I need to start having a four because of how long it takes to, for germination or for uh, DTMs. And then how long it takes this to decompose with plastic over top of it. Because now with the cooler days, it'll start taking longer to, um, to decompose all this stuff that's in there yeah yeah but it works really well like i've had this has been my microgreen patch now for three years and this patch in three years has made more money per square foot than all my other beds have in 10 years wow combined like it's wow yeah it's ridiculous but again it's i have it here so it's right in my face i don't walk by it it's and everybody's now trained to hey look at it are those ready to harvest do we need to deal with those because they can go like sun shoots, you know. A sun shoot can go from perfect to gone in like four hours. Absolutely, absolutely. So. With the with the with the true leaves coming in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's nice here because it's yeah, it's I I like this area. But I'm gonna switch to that side there because that bed is a little bit longer because of my weird shaped greenhouse. So we'll use all of that for microgreens next year. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just because I'm starting to get get a lot more need for the microgreens or what they call them as macro greens. Yeah. And even if you let them get another stage bigger. So I want to show you the different stages that I market them as. Well, cause yeah, I guess what you mean by the macro green is you get, you get a nice true leaf. Bear with me, I'm gonna grab a knife. Yep. The key for micro greens is an X-Acto knife that oh, you yeah. sharpen every time. You will cut yourself. That's just life, but <laughs> man, it's, it's worth it. It's so worth it. So this is not gonna be as sharp but this is kind of how it look. So I want to just explain what I, how I, do, how I look at these. And have you ever tasted these at this oh, small yeah. stage? Uh, uh, Red Giant? Or just at a small stage of microgreen, they're just so nice. They're so much less pungent than normal mustard. Mm -hmm. So the microgreens that they advertise that are usually on pictures are right around this stage mm -hmm. or they're at the stage where this leaf would be missing, so yeah, where they're smaller, right? Yeah. Whereas at that stage, they don't actually have a lot of flavor. You've probably noticed that mm -hmm. too. So what I do is we call this a number one stage where the first leaf, the biggest one, is the same size as the cotyledons. A number two stage is where the second leaf is at the same stage as the cotyledon. So this one would be the closest mm -hmm. to that. So this stage, they're the same size as these guys. And then the next, the first leaf itself is bigger. So that's a number two stage. A number three stage is where you start getting two leaves bigger than the cotyledons. Mm -hmm. And then there's a fourth stage where they're bigger yet. So this would be a number one stage, mm -hmm. or sorry, number two stage, because it's here. 
and then we start getting bigger. So at this point, the the the, the uh, restaurant can feature them whole, whatever they want, and it's uh, yeah. We find that about the perfect stage is between this, like kind of around these stages. Whereas this is a little bit too small. There's really no definition between yeah. this. Like they all look the same at that yeah. point. Because if you look at the Cali Leadens, right? Uh, you've noticed that before they're all the same they're different yeah. in color variation well big deal right mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. like if it if you want a fancy plate then that's not going to matter but if you look at the difference between a leaf uh let's see i'm going to get a leaf of a you know like the leaf of of this guy versus the leaf of this guy they're just so different yes. so therefore they stick out yeah and that's really what I what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I would want the red Russian to be another two days. We have to harvest it today for uh, for some of our clients. We're going to keep a little strip here because we don't need all of it. Mm -hmm. And then in two days' time, they'll be ready to go. This right now is perfect stage because of that. But this green as well, which is uh, red giant, doesn't matter if it's a bit bigger. It looks awesome, a little bit bigger. Um, so and then, have, so what is the, what stage is the macro green for? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the macro green is anywhere between. I would say, I would still call this a micro green. But a macro green is this where you start seeing the leaf bigger, yeah. like the the first true leaves bigger than the cotyledons. And so are you are you marketing green. that way to the chefs? Like you, that's a I term. I call them a micro green. But uh, Dave it's a, it's a cool now, term though that yeah. you've kind of made up there. I've never heard that before. A macro uh, green. That's, yeah, Dave Kai came up with. He kept ordering them as macro greens. Oh really? I'm okay. Like, uh, I'm like, dude, they're micro greens. Oh, He's that's like, awesome. Well, they're actually macro. That's, that's how cool. I market them. Yeah, so. so Dave is a customer that John and I have both sold to for many years. So Red Russian here, Red Giant here, uh, Purple Giant actually? Giant, I think giant, that's Red Giant, giant and that's... Red Giant. This that's, is actually a mix of Miss America and uh, what is the other one? Miss America and something. I tried using them for a salad green. They are so inconsistent with our growth habits. As you can see here, like look how small that leaf is. Look how big that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Very weird. I'm not, I mean, it's a beautiful color if you can get it right. Yeah. But it's crap. Now the green that I'm liking, have, that I've liked the last couple of years is this. It's called Amara. They market it's just a it, green mustard, isn't it? Actually, it's a, they, call, they market it as a mustard kale. Huh. So it's or Ethiopian kale. Uh, it's also known as Highland kale, and it will grow as big as kale, and it grows very much like a kale, like out the top. So like if you cut it, it's, it's hard to tell here, but once you harvest it out there, it's a very hard one to cut and come again. So it's nice to keep peeling the leaves off if you're gonna grow it for bigger. Wait, you get cut and come again on these? No, no, no. I'm okay. just saying you could use this for a. Uh, you can't use this as a cut and come again for greens. Okay, okay. And then this is just. Misabina. Yeah. Which I don't know. I'm I'm kind of here and there with it. I'm not quite Probably, sure. It looks like it goes yellow pretty quick. That's the color of it. Oh really? That's actually the color of it. It's lime green. Uh, yeah. Have you ever grown shungiko? Shungiko, Sh yes. That's a cool microgreen. I know. I had really good success with that. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I actually grew it as big as well. Yep. Yeah. And then so now here we have these are radishes. Oh yeah. Planted just the same way. So they're bigger. They're definitely bigger than your than the ones in at uh, inside, like in trays. Way bigger. Yeah. And thicker. Yeah. So off of 14 feet. What is this? 4, 8, 12, 16. Yeah, this is 14 feet. This will yield probably around man five or six kilos. How much a kilo? This is 35 a kilo. Pretty this is the good. same as this. For an so eight day if you, crop. Yeah. Yeah, it's and it's planted the same way with a four pointer at well I drilled out my holes so it's hard to tell what it is. Right. But I the hoppers full will do two passes like they're Her four row. rows. Yeah. Uh, two passes. But I do two passes, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't do not one pass, then another pass. I actually run twice so that one hopper fills that. Yeah. Because I need to drop that much seed in order to, to get it this dense. Right. I yeah. don't I they don't have holes big enough to do it in one pass. Wow. Very cool. And this is planted. So this is actually last week's plant. It looks like it's good. To, you're going to harvest this for Friday for or tomorrow. There, tomorrow. Yeah. So this is 10, 11 days old. Mm -hmm. So now radish shoots are at the same date, days to maturity right now as sun shoots and pea shoots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So fast. Yeah. Wow. 
All right, guys, well, that is uh, field microgreens in a nutshell here at Wise Earth Farm. If you want to see more videos like that, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. And uh, I look forward to doing more videos here at Wise Earth Farm. Talk to you later. Bye.